Scale RC shocks are amazing in their simplicity, especially considering the damping profiles that the piston heads can achieve with virtually no moving parts. Full scale shocks are a complicated combination of springs and washers or shim stacks that create the damping response. Most RC shocks are simply a carefully engineered and deliberately shaped disc of plastic. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my shock design basics video first. On this channel, we look at the science behind our grown-up toys. When you hear high speed or low speed damping in reference to a shock, that refers to the piston speed inside the shock body, not the vehicle speed. RC crawlers live almost entirely in the low speed damping range. They rarely generate enough shaft speed to be considered high speed, which makes this topic easier because today we can focus on low speed damping tuning. In a different video, I will explain high speed tuning for trucks, buggies, and other fast moving vehicles that hit jumps and bumps at speed. The only exceptions I can think of on a slow moving crawler is maybe a throttle bump, run outs, or my personal favorite, a death drop. Of course, damping isn't just high speed or low speed only. There's a transitional zone between the two, balancing high speed and low speed. It's not binary. In reality, it's blended. Let's take a quick look at all the most common piston head damping tuning variables. You'll see piston heads with two holes, three holes, three smaller holes, multiple sized holes, four holes, five holes, six holes, You'll see different thicknesses of the piston head. The edge of the piston can be a factor. They'll either be square, chamfered, or rounded. You can get tapered pistons, which have this taper on one side, which starts to get a different response in compression than rebound. There are a couple other less common designs. This has the ports drilled at an angle. Team Associated doesn't bother to give us a high quality photo of it. This one has a groove connecting the holes. I can take a guess what I think is going on here, but Associated doesn't seem to know what it does. At least they haven't bothered to tell us. There are a couple companies making shim stack valves, which is a great direction for RC, but they do become complicated. The MIP bypass valve is one, and the Fioroni tap is another. These are mostly for larger eight scale buggies when you have room to fit these mechanisms in the shocks. Slow speed damping pretty much comes down to three variables. Oil weight or thickness, also known as viscosity, total open area of the holes or ports, and the number of ports. RC shocks are what's called a free bleed design. Oil is always free to bleed through the holes and around the piston head. Valves don't open or close. It's extremely simple, yet very effective if you know what you're doing. The variables that mainly affect a slow moving, low shaft speed crawler are hole count, hole size, and of course oil viscosity. These are the variables we will focus on for this introductory video. High speed damping force is controlled primarily by all of these edges shown in blue. The more edges and the sharper the edges, the higher the damping friction at higher speeds. We will cover this in the second part of the piston head tuning video series. The reason hole size changes damping is because the area available for oil to pass through changes. This is something called flow rate, which is Q equals VA. The flow rate is the velocity of the fluid times the area it has to move through. The velocity is controlled by the terrain and shaft speed, so we can't control that, but we can control the area which means the open area of the holes. Bigger holes means more area, higher flow rate, less constriction, which equals less resistance and lower damping force. The reason hole count affects damping is for a different reason. Assume that the hole sizes are different, so the total area remains the same. Assume four smaller holes is the same area as three bigger holes. Let's look at the piston head from the top. If the total area of the holes is the same, the damping force goes down because the oil has to move a shorter distance to find the closest hole. 
So the piston is able to move sooner because the oil gets to the bypass holes quicker. Now you might be thinking that the difference between three and four holes must just be the difference in open area between those holes, which is about a 29% difference between three and four. But that's not quite the full story. Let's take a look at the size of the gap between the piston head and the body. The orange circle is the outside body of the shock. All my shocks are orange, you probably have a different color. Oil will pass around the outside of the piston head, in addition to going through the holes. On many full-size shocks, there may be a seal to prevent oil from passing around the piston head. That seal forces all the oil through the valves. On a scale shock, this is an additional free bleed path, as sealing this would add too much friction. So when your piston cycles through the shock, some oil does flow around the outside of the piston head. 100% of the oil isn't forced through the ports. So I want to know how much is going around the outside. To do that, we'll need to get a few measurements. This is a nominal 10 millimeter bore shock. So these piston heads should be around 10 or smaller. I'm going to measure a few different places on a couple different ones. Looks like it ranges from about 10.3 to 10.7. Let's call it 10.5. Now we want to measure the inside diameter of this. And technically, this is not the proper way to do it. The reason being is these teeth right here have small flat edges on them. And you can't reach the full diameter that you're measuring your measurement will always be slightly undersized. So, to do it correctly, we need a different tool. One way to do it is with these small hole gauges. Let's pick uh, this one here. And the way this works is there's a little screw on this that expands it up and down. And what you do is you put it in the bore you're trying to measure. You tighten this just a little bit until it's right at the diameter with no play. So now this feels like it's exactly at that outside diameter. Now it's too tight. So this is pretty much right exactly at that inside diameter without any play. And then you measure this. Measure this a couple times. Get it right at the fat spot. I'm going to call that 10.18. And that's how you use a small bore gauge. So now we know the area around the outside to add to the calculation. So this is for a 10 millimeter nominal shock, which is the most common bore diameter for 10th scale crawlers. The piston head I measured was 10.05 millimeters. The body ID internally was 10.18 millimeters. And if you know the basic area formula, you can subtract and get an area of 2.1 square millimeters. Here are tables of the area in square millimeters for hole count versus hole diameter. Let's compare with and without the addition of the perimeter volume added. If you look at a couple numbers here, let's just say a 1.6 millimeter port size with three holes and four holes, you can see it makes a pretty big difference. If you're just looking at the holes, it's 29%, but when you consider the perimeter, it's actually only 22%. To reiterate, slow speed damping is primarily a function of area. So we can compare the areas of different hole sizes and hole counts. For example, four holes at a 1.7 millimeter diameter will produce about the same damping force as six holes with a smaller 1.4 millimeter hole.
Again, this is really only at low speed. At high shaft speeds, these two configurations will not perform the same, but at slow shaft speeds, they will be very close. We said earlier that slow speed damping force comes primarily from area and oil thickness. You can actually use either variable to get about the same response. Changing your oil weight will have the same effect as changing your piston head hole count for low speed damping events. Suppose you're debating between three and four hole piston head. We said earlier that the difference is about 22%. If your current oil weight is 20, then you're in luck. If you simply switch to 25 weight, you will get the same 22% difference in damping force. Now it's probably not a perfect linear one-to-one -one trade off, but it should be pretty close. This is when half weights might come in handy. You can change your damping by increments that are smaller than the 22% that three to four holes give. Also note, if you change more than one oil weight, you simply add the percentages together. For example, if you jump from 20 to 27.5, you'll add 12 plus 11 plus 10 and get a 33% increase in damping. Also, you can always mix your own oils, believe it or not, to create weights that you might not have. Now, normally I like to demonstrate practically the principle that we've talked about, but shock dynos start about $10,000, which is currently outside the budget of this channel. Shock dynos move the shock at a variety of constant velocities, including very high speed. They produce charts that look like this. There's not a simple way that I've thought of yet to simulate a constant speed, so we can look at damping force. But when I do, you'll be the first to know. Oh, oh.